friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan. Happy Monday, it's Monday so it's another meal prep day. I have three really good recipes for you. In fact, all three of these are Troy approved, which is saying a lot. So if you're excited for another meal prep, give this video a big thumbs up. And if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love to have you here. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video. I do a meal prep every Monday, so you don't wanna miss out. Check out the description box down below for all of the recipes in today's video. They are on my recipe website, and that is linked in the description box along with nutrition coaching. I do offer personalized two you macros and calories highly highly recommend and if you want to chat with me directly I have one-on-one -on -one coaching as well links discounts to everything I shared with you in today's video as well as all of my other favorite things and of course my Facebook group come on over join us there we'd love to have you are all down in that description box so we have three delicious recipes to create so let's get started breakfast this week I'm making healthy morning glory muffins I'm pretty excited about these I'm going to pair these with some eggs and some fruit for my breakfast for the week so let me show you what's in our recipe first you're going to need a small apple some cinnamon an orange crushed pineapple this is actually left over from a previous recipe the recipe calls for golden raisins I don't have any so I'm just going to use regular raisins and then some no sugar added cranberries vanilla extract, walnuts. My walnuts are from Imperfect Foods. As always, I will link Imperfect Foods down below with $20 worth of free groceries. No minimum order. Highly recommend them. They're such a great service. You're also going to need some baking soda, eggs, salt, all-purpose flour, unsweetened applesauce, unsweetened coconut flakes, sweetener of your choice, mine is the Lakanto monk fruit. I will also link Lakanto down below with 15% off. And lastly, some carrots. So the first thing we need to do is prepare the apple, orange, and carrots. So with the carrots, I'm going to peel them and grate them. We want one cup total of grated carrots. I'm also going to peel and grate the small apple and zest the orange. is whisk together the dry ingredients. So I have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of monk fruit sweetener, a pinch of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, and two teaspoons of cinnamon. And then we're just going to stir this together until fully mixed. Once that is stirred really well, we're going to add in all of our good stuff. So we're going to start with our orange zest. One half of a cup of raisins. Again, I did half raisins, half reduced sugar craisins. One third cup of unsweetened coconut flakes. Eight ounces of crushed pineapple. The one cup of grated carrots. And the one grated apple, which is already turning brown. How crazy is that? We just finished grating that. And then we're going to stir all of this until well incorporated. So here is what the wet mixture should look like. Go ahead and set that aside. Now into a small bowl, we're going to add one cup of unsweetened applesauce, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and two eggs. And then whisk all of that together until mixed we're going to add that applesauce egg and vanilla mixture to the other mixture and then stir that really really well you want everything combined a hundred percent 
I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. I'm going to spray my silicone muffin pan with nonstick cooking spray. I usually get a lot of questions on this muffin pan. This actually came from Fred Meyer during Easter. So I don't know if you can still find it, but silicone muffin pans are amazing. And then I'm going to use my large scoop. I picked this scoop pack up off of Amazon. I'll link it down below if it's available. And I'm going to add one heaping scoop to each of my muffin liners. We want 12 muffins total. I'm so hung up on you. I couldn't tell you what it feels like. But I sure think you do. These are going to be some ginormous muffins. I had to fill it completely full to get all of the batter into 12 muffins. I have my one third cup of, of walnuts and I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit of those on top of each of the muffins. Now you can omit the walnuts altogether, or you could even mix them into the batter, but I'm going to put these in my 350 degree oven for 30 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. So I just pulled the muffins out of the oven and like I said, these are some ginormous muffins. These totally look like bakery muffins and they smell so delicious. So I am so excited for these for the week. So each one of these huge muffins is only four points on all plans. So it's a great start to a healthy breakfast. You can again add some eggs for protein and some fruit with your cup of coffee in the morning. So excited to have these all week. For my lunch this week, I'm making slow cooker crack chicken. I have heard such good things about this recipe that I'm so excited to try it, but I'm actually going to make mine in the Instant Pot just to speed it up a little bit. But let me share with you the ingredients that you'll need for the recipe. First, you'll need some bacon. I'm using center cut bacon. That just helps cut down on the points a bit. A packet of ranch seasoning. This is my favorite one. This is from the Thrive Market. You guys know how much I love the Thrive Market. I will have it linked down below with a free gift for you guys. One third less fat cream cheese, and then a couple of pounds of chicken breast or chicken tenderloins. You'll also need about a half of a cup of water. The first thing I'm going to do is put eight ounces. I just went ahead and weighed that out on my food scale. It was about half of that package of bacon into my oven to cook it up and get it nice and crispy. So to prepare it in my Instant Pot, it's very simple whether you do this in your crock pot or in an Instant Pot, you could probably do this on the stove top as well. But basically we're going to add our four ingredients minus our bacon directly into the Instant Pot. So I'm going to start with my chicken. I have about two pounds of chicken here. I'm going to add one half of a cup of water, my entire packet of ranch seasoning, and my eight ounces of one third less fat cream cheese directly to my Instant Pot. I'm going to put my lid on and set this to pressure cook for 15 minutes. Once the Instant Pot turns off, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick release to release all of the pressure. Once you remove the lid, go ahead and shred up the chicken, mixing it in with the cream cheese and whatever liquid is remaining in the Instant Pot. So here is the chicken out of the Instant Pot. I just put it in a glass storage container. And then we're going to crumble up the eight ounces of bacon. And I'm going to put it separately and then just add some of it to the chicken every day just because I don't want the bacon to get soggy as it sits in with the chicken. So let me crumble up the bacon, get it in a storage container, and then we'll go over points and calories. For the crack chicken, this container makes eight serving. So I'm going to divide this out into eight servings. My plan is to roll this up in a tortilla. I think it would make a really good kind of chicken wrap. And then here is my crumbled up eight ounces of bacon. So that's about an ounce of bacon per wrap. That's a pretty good amount. And then I'll just roll it up with some onion, lettuce, and a wrap. And that will be my lunches for the week. And then I will pair that most likely with some fruit. I may have it with some chips. We'll just kind of see what I feel like. 
but for the points and calories for the crack chicken, it is four points on the blue and purple plan and six points on the green plan. And that is just the chicken mixture. So you would have to add points for any tortilla or anything else that you add to it. But I'm excited to try this. I have heard so many good things about this recipe. For a sweet treat this week, I'm making homemade blueberry scones. Like I mentioned in my grocery haul, I love scones so much. They're one of my very favorite things. So I'm gonna make a big batch of scones. So let's go over what's in the recipe. First, you're going to need blueberries. You can do fresh or frozen. You'll also need an egg, whole milk, light butter, sweetener of your choice. As always, I'm using Lakanto. It is linked down below with a discount for 15% off baking powder, all-purpose flour, vanilla extract, cinnamon, and salt. So the first thing we're going to do is start on our dry ingredients. So I have two cups of all-purpose flour, half of a cup of my monk fruit sweetener, two and a half teaspoons of a baking powder. This is a one teaspoon, so I'm going to do two and a half. One teaspoon of ground cinnamon and then about half of a teaspoon of salt. Mix that all together. You wanna to make sure those dry ingredients are fully incorporated. I had my one half of a cup of light butter in the freezer to try to get it nice and cold. So I am going to add it to the dry ingredients. And with your fingers, a pastry fork, or I'm using one of these slotted fork type of wooden spoons. Go ahead and mix that in with the dry ingredients. It should be fairly clumpy. I'm going to place this mixture in the refrigerator while we put together the wet ingredients. Into a small bowl, I'm adding one half of a cup of whole milk, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract, one egg, and then we are whisking this together until mixed. Add in your one cup of fresh or frozen blueberries. And then again, just stir until everything is coated. We're going to add the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. And then again, we're going to just mix this together until it is mixed and everything is coated. We wanna make sure that a dough is formed, but we also do not want to over mix. Our dough will most likely be fairly on the sticky side. We're now going to add the dough mixture to a solid surface. And you can see I've removed my wedding ring because we're going to go in with our hands and form this into a ball of dough. Now, if it's too sticky, go ahead and add a little bit of flour to your working surface. And if it's too dry, just drizzle in just the tiniest bit more whole milk until you have the desired dough consistency. As I'm kind of kneading mine together, I'm finding that mine is maybe a bit on the sticky side. So I'm going to add a tiny bit more flour. All right, we have a big mess, but we did it. I added about an additional half of a cup of flour or so to the dough to get it where it wasn't so sticky that I couldn't even work with it. And I spread it out with my hand. This is about an eight inch circle or so of the dough. The recipe makes eight scones. So we just wanna make sure that we get eight scones total out of the batch. So I'm going to cut it into eight pieces. So you can see that I have little triangles, kind of the traditional shape of a scone. Oh yeah, this is actually working better than I was thinking that it would work. And then I'm just going to place these on a parchment lined baking sheet. And then before it goes into the oven, we're going to put our scones into our refrigerator for at least 15 minutes. That will definitely help them hold their shape a little bit better. So I'm going to cut all eight scones and then we'll get them in into the refrigerator. Oh my gosh, you guys, I realized that I was cutting them into 16. I'm happy to report that our scones are going to be much larger in size. This makes me feel a little bit better. So eight scones, not 16 scones, Jen. So there are our scones. So they don't look the prettiest. These ones I ended up just kind of squishing the two pieces together into one. Listen, sometimes our food doesn't look as pretty as good as it tastes. So we're just gonna go with it. I'm gonna throw these in the fridge for about 15 minutes and preheat my oven to 400 degrees. Look at these scones. 
I feel like we are legit a bakery today. Between those morning glory muffins and these amazing looking scones, even the ones that I kind of pieced together look so incredibly delicious. These are absolutely huge. Now, if you go to Starbucks, you know how many points their scones are. I will put them here on the screen. However, these do not have frosting, but you could add a glaze, a very simple powdered sugar substitute glaze like the Locanto powdered. Mix it with a little bit of lemon juice and water and you can add a beautiful glaze to these scones, which would make them a little bit more of a sweet treat. But you guys, I'm so excited for these. These scones make eight large scones total and they are only five points, five per scone. Now you can add that drizzle we talked about with the powdered sugar substitute for zero additional points. That is incredible. So there you have it, homemade blueberry scones for five points on all plans. Thank you for joining me on this week's WW Meal Prep. I hope you are as excited as I am about these three recipes. I'm telling you, if Troy loved them, they've got to be good. Don't forget they are on my recipe website, which is linked down in the description box, along with nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, and my Facebook group. So definitely check out that description box. Give this video a thumbs up if you're excited for these three recipes and you enjoyed today's meal prep video. And of course, subscribe if you haven't. We'd love to have you join our community. Thank you again for watching. Happy Monday, and I'll see you next time. Bye.